Chapter 4 A Radical Transformation The hunter's hands turned into claws, his teeth became jagged as they bulged from his face, and his skin began growing green and black scales all over. Karu gasped, he's... The half-man roared like a wild beast, his voice echoed throughout the tropical forest. Kamari and the others immediately took off, spreading through the woods frantically. Hikaru was running as fast as his legs could carry, while pulling Amber's hand to make sure that she kept up. He quickly glanced behind his shoulder to see if the hunter was gaining ground, and that's when he noticed Kamari was no longer behind them. Instantly stopping, he turned around and saw Kamari through the trees with his stained katana in hand, ready to challenge the hunter. Hikaru glanced at Amber. Stay right here! He took off quickly, racing toward the battleground. Looking up from a closer range, Hikaru saw that the hunter was now a 30 foot tall dragon, then backpedaled a few steps at the sight of the monster. The hunter was massive, with red eyes, a long tail, and huge wings bulging from his back. Hikaru! <laughs> Hikaru Get out of here! You can't fight this thing! Run! Hikaru screamed. I told you to get out of here, Kamari yelled more aggressively. I can beat him! Hikaru hesitated, then snapped back to his senses and raced behind a tree to watch, hoping that Kamari had some type of brilliant plan. So you actually think you can defeat me? The hunter said, his monstrous voice vibrating through Kamari's spine. The beast's giant wings stretched out, knocking over tree limbs, and its long muscular neck leaned forward as its red eyes glared at Kamari with only a few feet of distance separating them. Stupid kid, you should have kept running! The dragon spat. There's no need for me to run, Kamari said arrogantly, wiping the saliva from his cheek. Come to think of it, I won't even need this sword. He threw his weapon to the ground, snapped his fingers, and made all of the plant life behind him vanish. Little oh boy, I'm going to eat you for breakfast! The hunter growled, baring his sharp, jagged fangs as jewels slid down the bottom of his snout. I'm afraid. No, Kamari replied, but I am getting bored. Well, I believe I have something more entertaining inside my mouth for you! Grabbing the sword, Kamari plunged the weapon into the lower gums of the dragon's teeth. Releasing the hilt, he rushed to make space between himself and the beast. The hunter effortlessly picked the katana from his mouth, using its black tongue to pluck the blade out. After running several feet away from the dragon, Kamari caused the plant life that he had tampered with earlier to reappear tightly knit like a thick wall between himself and the giant dragon. While using the uprooted plant life to buy time, he focused his power and radiant blue flames appeared all around the open forest forming into structures. Nakaru watched in absolute disbelief from behind a tree as every flame took human shape and transformed into blue Kamari-like figures. Hundreds of Kamari copies appeared on the forest ground, all standing beside one another, making four long lines, each posing in front of the original. Akaru got a hot sense of danger from the strange phenomena, uncomfortably feeling the heat that every figure generated through the air. The transformed hunter raised upon his hind legs, making himself even taller and intimidating, as its long neck stretched above the thick wall of knotted shrubs and trees. The beast opened its mouth like a snake and exhaled extreme amounts of fire toward Kamari and his copies. Hikaru gasped watching the inferno burn through the green wall, engulfing the front line of the bright figures. The huge dragon dropped down on all fours, causing the ground to tremble with the heat of the roaring viciously while its long tail whipped against the surface. Now you see that you're no match for me, the hunter roared. As the dragon gloated, tiny blue explosions erupted from the orange fire, then took over the forest ground where the wild inferno once blazed. The flames coursed through the atmosphere toward the dragon, and more clones exploded. The hunter was set ablaze by the blue fire, or sounded throughout the forest as the large beast toppled to the ground with a large boom. The car crowds the area from the bar, and through the inferno he saw a figure immersed by a glow of intense light. As the fire began to dissipate, there was nothing left but scorched dirt and the motionless large body of a dragon lying on the soil with Kamari standing in front of it unaffected. Hikaru raced out from the woods until reaching the glow, and when Kamari faced him, the whites of his eyes were flared up in a golden sparkle. He powered down and his eyes returned to their normal shade. 
At a loss for words, Hikaru pulled himself together, taking a large breath of surprisingly smokeless air. But before he could speak, the dragon let out a painful deep sigh. I refuse to let myself lose to a punk kid. The dragon whipped its tail at Kamari, striking him on the abdomen with a force that flung his body across the forest ground. No! Hikaru yelled, not thinking about the enemy. He rushed into aid. Kamari, get up! He shouted, falling to the ground on one knee. Kamari coughed up droplets of blood from his mouth. Then reality began again to take over Akaru's mind, painstakingly forcing him to realize that no one was invincible, not even a man who'd been the slayer of a dragon. This is all my fault, Akaru said, his eyes watering up with tears. He placed his hand on Kamari's shoulder, but was clueless on how he could possibly help. The hunter's tail raked slowly across the dirt and the beast let out a weak roar of laughter. Your bats better get tougher if you expect to survive. Believe me, I did you a favor. Novices are usually the first to die in this game, but I never expected to find a beginner as talented as your little buddy was, of course, and it's unimaginable to think what his skills would have been like if given time to grow. There can only be one master of the storm, and you two brats could never have defeated Kamari. His death should be your celebration, so start cheering me as I pass away. The hunter faded into a dark passage that inhaled the beast into the ground. Akaru looked down on his best friend while elevating his head in both arms. Kamari spat up more blood, and Hikaru could not help but burst into tears, realizing that he was about to lose his only friend. As he held him, Kamari's body also faded away, slowly slipping through Hikaru's arms into a dark void that appeared on the surface of the ground. After a short moment of Hikaru grieving, Ember approached behind him, clutching his arm while he wiped his face and gathered himself to stand. We have to find a way out. Sorrowfully, Hikaru raised his arm and imagined a portal back to New York City. The passage opened into a large oval revealing the city. Then he and Amber stepped inside. In the next chapter, Amber and Akaru struggle to figure out what they must do in chapter 5, A Part of the Storm.